Hello there, my fellow Chaos Tainted friends, and welcome to another video about all the different flavors of evil chaotic units. Today's episode is gonna be a little different from my previous Forces of Chaos videos, that's mainly because the two topics I covered today didn't have enough lore to warrant individual videos for each. So today you're getting two things from the Forces of Chaos at the price of one. First one is the Mutilators, which are kinda like Obliterators, but they focus on melee instead. Second is gonna be the Chaos Havocs. Now, just like Chaos Raptors are the counterparts of Loyalist Assault Marines, Havocs are the counterpart to Devastator Marines. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn a couple of things about Mutilators and Havocs. Shall we? A Mutilator is a vile Chaos Space Marine whose intense lust for battle and quest for the simple purity of the blade have warped his physical power until he has fused body and soul with his melee weaponry. Mutilators seek not only to commune with powerful war spirits, but to absorb them, assimilating the warp spawned power of the various close combat weapons into their own souls and flesh metal bodies, so they can manifest corrupted versions of these at will. The exact origin of the Servants of Chaos known as Mutilators is not exactly clear. It is generally believed that the first of their number were originally Terminators of the Traitor Legions, who specialized in close quarters fighting. But as with all who harbor an obsession within the warp, they grew to become the incarnation of the murderous desires in their hearts. Like their brother heretics, they adopted an obsession with the warp that mutated them into mindless killing machines, becoming one with the axes and swords that they hold dear. Those who dedicate themselves to the act of killing in melee cannot help but be affected by it. The satisfying impact of a bludgeon smashing into a head, the yielding of flesh to the point of a blade or axe's bloody bite, even the most loyal space marine cannot deny that these acts bring a rush or even a thrill to the mind and body alike. A lifetime of unrelenting battle can breed a dangerous need for such acts of violence, and when the period spans for several centuries, the effects upon the psyche can be disturbing. For those who seek refuge in the Immaterium, their psychosis is magnified beyond all reason. Such warriors might begin their descent into madness by constant maintenance of their weapons in between battles, by chaining themselves to their favored war gear, or by outright refusing to let go of their favored tool of war under any circumstance. These dangerously focused individuals are easy prey for the corruption of chaos. Before long, a warrior who yearns too much for the visceral charms of battle may find that he has literally fused with the weapons, the blade becoming part of him as a hand would be of a normal man. Over time, these assault specialists come to identify more with their weaponry than their fellow battle brothers. Disillusioned by the fickle nature of mankind, they instead strive for the purity of the weapon. As the years take their toll, such individuals leave their humanity behind altogether, becoming living weapons instead. But a physical bond to their weapon is only the beginning of a mutilator's transformation. As the warrior's physicality changes, his spirit fuses with the Imperian war spirits of destruction and butchery that flicker within his weaponry. Even the smallest scalpel has a psychic reflection in the warp, a splinter of potential that becomes stronger the more deaths the weapon causes. The eldest of weapons, having claimed the hot blood of thousands of victims, have strong but simple war spirits that thirst for battle. A truly ancient relic may even have a limited sentience or be possessed of a battle lust which surpasses that of its holder. This actually reminds me of an interesting bit from a great novel called Storm of Iron by Graham McNeil. In it, there's a moment where a traitor godswoman, if I remember correctly, gets hold of a chaos axe of some kind, 
which was used by one of her Chaos Space Marine Masters. And over a short period of time, she actually changes into a champion of corn. That's so you can get an idea how powerful these weapon spirits can be. Mutilators seek not only to commune with these war spirits, but to absorb them, assimilating the warp spawned power of chain fists, power axes, lightning claws into their own essence so they can manifest them later and at will always adding to their corrupted arsenal. However, mutilators are not content even there. Eviscerators and bladed siege moles whir and clang into being at the ends of their grotesquely muscled arms, bringing death to the enemy. Each kill anoints and empowers the weapon spirits that each mutilator manifests, his dagger-sharp teeth bared in glee as he dismembers and crushes the bodies of his foes. They usually operate in groups of three. However, larger groups of mutilators can join together with obliterators and warp smiths to create a so-called cult of destruction. Mutilators are capable of manifesting many different forms of close combat weapons at the end of their arms. Flesh metal is an iron-hard fusion of muscle, tendon, and powered steel, forming a hideous exoskeleton of our bodies which have melded with their ancient power armor. Fortunately for their foes, this additional protection comes at the cost of additional bulk, which can make the mutilator move rather slowly when advancing forward towards the enemy. Flesh metal is also the same twisted armor used by the obliterator forces of chaos, among other servants of the dark gods who have manifested the same mutation. At any one time, they can be using pairs of chain fists, lightning claws, power axes, power mauls, and power swords, and anything else you can imagine that simply erupt out of their limbs. The Chaos Space Marine Havocs Havocs are the Chaos variant of the Space Marine Devastator, heavy weapon specialists who are trained to annihilate their enemy at long range. Squads of Havocs provide devastating anti-infantry and anti-armor firepower, dominating large swathes of the battlefield with volley after punishing volley. Such is the blood-pounding thrill of pouring heavy fire into the enemy ranks that many Havocs become obsessed by the power their weapons afford them. This actually seems to be a running theme with Chaos. They see themselves as gods of the battlefield, blasting the insect vermin of the enemy into oblivion with each twitch of the finger. Havoc squads carry a high proportion of heavy weapons to lay down supporting fire for their brothers. Over time, a Havoc squad which lingers within the warp may find their heavy weapons becoming part of them, extensions of their own physical body that can never be laid down or relinquished. Casings blend with flesh, blood plasma becomes highly volatile, and ammunition hoppers become hungry mouths which snap and growl for more bullets. Eventually, Chaos Space Marines and Havoc become one and the same entity. This is the way of chaos. Where the warp bleeds into real space, it is not nature that defines form, but deadly psychic compulsion. The ugliness in a Havoc's soul is made manifest in the flesh for all to see. Havocs often employ rhino armored transports, allowing a Havoc squad to speedily claim high ground or some other strategically important vantage point, from which they can decimate the enemy with their heavy weaponry. A Chaos Rhino also allows Havocs to redeploy rapidly, should all their targets be destroyed or the enemy attack imminent. This way, the Havocs always stand ready to lend their supporting firepower to their corrupt brethren wherever the fighting is thickest. A Havoc unit is usually composed of between 4 and 9 Havocs, which are led by an aspiring champion. As far as war gear goes, they have power armor, a choice of heavy weapon, which can include flamer, heavy bolter, autocannon, meltagun, plasma gun, missile launcher, or last cannon. Whoever is not using these can use the regular bolter or bolt pistol. For the aspiring champion only, we have a close combat weapon, a plasma pistol, and melta bombs. 
The squad can also use crack grenades and frag grenades, and like I said, a chaos rhino for transport. And all this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about mutilators and chaos havocs for today. I'm sorry there isn't as much lore on the havocs as everyone would like, but after all they are just evil devastator marines, which I already covered in my Space Marines Forces series. What are your thoughts on the mutilators? Would you prefer them over obliterators? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video enjoyable or informative? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for more content. And if you'd like to help keep the lore videos coming, please go check my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a great day. The Emperor Protects.